Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive. Daniel here. I hope you're doing well, and if you're not, I hope you are soon. Okay, today on the channel, I am so, so happy to be here with the second edition of Rogue Dungeon. And I am also so, so very happy for the guys over at uh, Cerberus Gate Games. And they delivered just an amazing Kickstarter. Uh, this right here, this is a premier example of how to do a second edition. And it's just, it's, yeah, it just makes me very happy for, for the guys over there and for this game. And uh, if you remember in my original video for Rogue Dungeon, which I think I had the first video on YouTube that wasn't an instructional video from the creator. And I kind of had discovered this game on Game Crafter and instantly fell in love with it. I think this is one of the finest dungeon crawls ever made, especially because it's in such a small box and offers up so much gameplay. But in my original video for Rogue Dungeon, I said that if the Dungeon Dive was a publisher and if I had the money to invest in the development of a game, and in the publishing of a game, that Rogue Dungeon would be the very first game that I pursued down that avenue. And so I am just so, so happy that this game exists. And I know that uh, they mention in the rule book that uh, the existence of this second edition is uh, thanks to the Dungeon Dive community and all of the support that we've given them. And it makes me so happy to see people on the Dungeon Dive Facebook group uh, praising this game and, and enjoying it. And to me, this is just such an, a, a success story. A, uh, the, the exact reason why crowdfunding exists is because of Rogue Dungeon and the, the folks at, at Cerberus Gate. They, they took that, that path of creating a DIY a kind of prototype version on, on Game Crafter. And then we had some, uh, some like grassroots uh, movement, some effort to get the game a little more popular and to get the game sold more. And then that encouraged uh, them, the developers, to put out and create this second edition, which has just completely blown me away. So let's read a little bit about Rogue Dungeon here. Now, I was a backer of this game, and we also did an interview with the guys over there. So uh, Rogue Dungeon is a one to three player cooperative dungeon crawler originally designed for solo play. It plays like an old school roguelike using hand management, card draw, and dice rolling as primary game mechanics. Explore the map of each dungeon level, encountering traps and fighting monsters. Find treasures and various items such as weapons, armor, magical potions, scrolls, and artifacts to aid you on your quest. Gain experience to improve your hero abilities and skills and trade to improve your inventory. Players will need to figure out how best to use their hero's abilities, skills, items, experience, and luck to survive the dungeon. Each even more replayability, enjoy even more replayability with new content and game modes such as the tomb and large dungeon maps. So one of my main kind of points of contention, one of my, my main uh, points of criticism about the original, the second edition here, was the, the art and the overall graphic design. And I think that has been improved greatly. It may not look like it on the surface, but it really has. Uh, the second edition feels kind of like an HD version of a, of a video game that might be remade. So if we just take a look here at the first edition box, you can see there's kind of this smoothing effect uh, filter along the border it just makes things look a lot better. And the first edition here, as an example, uh, just take a look at uh, the knight's face here, the paladin. And then if you look at the second edition, while it is similar, it just has so much more detail, so much more depth to the art. I like that the artist has continued to embrace that kind of 3D video game feel, but they have gone for, I think, an even bolder look. And I really do like the way that this second edition looks. As a matter of fact, I don't really have a complaint at all about this second edition. And in this video, also the box is just barely bigger. It's just a little bit taller and slightly, slightly uh, wider. But uh, in this video, we are going to be taking a detailed look in comparison between the two. 
We'll kind of look at the, at some of the stuff you got in the first, how it now looks in the second. Talk a little bit about some of the new things that you get and take a look at maybe one or two of the new modes here. So here is the new rule book. Uh, let's go ahead and do, let's go ahead and work on our comparison now. So this is just going to be a real kind of casual, uh, casual video today. Uh, probably a longer video because I just want to, I just kind of want to talk and gush about this game because I'm, I'm just so proud that this game exists. I'm so proud for the guys and so happy for them that it exists and that people are, are really, really loving it. So as you can see, the new rule book looks a lot better. Uh, this just didn't really fit in with the rest of the way that the game looked in the first edition. In the second edition, it just looks much better. And there is a really nice thank you to the dungeon dive back here. Um, we have had tremendous support and feedback from the Dungeon Dive community. Seriously, we probably would not have done this game without their support. We really love the content and discussions on the channel. Thank you guys. And it's great to have a channel devoted to all things Dungeon Fantasy. And then here we have the creators there. So yeah, uh, the art director, John, he, he really, I think, just kind of knocked it out of the park with this new edition. I think it looks just fantastic. And I do like that it still kind of has a video game 3D kind of quality to it, but it's a lot more kind of 3D and tangible and chunky. It almost feels like uh, these were based off of clay models or something. I don't know. I think it looks great. But the rules for the original were already pretty good. I think they were better than a lot of big published games that I have covered on the channel. And I think that is true also for these second edition rules. They are pretty well written and everything is there. It makes learning the game pretty easy. Uh, one new thing that you will get are some meeples for all of the uh, characters. Now you won't get male and female versions of the meeples and there are male and female sides to each of the characters. But I think these new meeples are really cool. I like that they have the silhouette of the hero that you will be playing with. And uh, yeah, these are just neat little me meeples. I prefer wooden tokens over uh, over plastic, so I'm glad those exist. And you also get a few uh, new kind of um, little li little tokens to keep track of some uh, some effects that might happen, and also a little puzzle that you get to kind of solve in one of the dungeon rooms. You will use some of these some of these new little tokens. So there are some new cards and some new encounters and some new things that you do have to deal with while you are exploring the various levels, the five levels of the dungeon. Uh, let's see here, how should we start? Let me let me take things out. Let's take a look at the at the boards first because that was one of my big criticisms, was just the way that the, the, the main player board looked where you held all of your cards. And uh, man, they look, they look so, so much nicer now. So I'll put out the first edition board here and we can take a look at that. So here is the uh, first edition board. Now, one thing I do like about the first edition board is on the back side here, we did get this kind of cool poster and I think that's pretty awesome. But here is the first edition board and yeah, it was just really kind of, kind of messy and this kind of, uh, I don't know, Aztec stone, just, it just looked a little, I don't want to say cheap, but a little amateurish. And hey, that's what it was. You know, this is a game made by amateurs and that's fine. I still loved the game, even when it looked like this, but it looks so much nicer now. And the boards themselves are much thicker. So real kind of game boards here, just really, really nice. And you know what's cool? I was a little worried because sometimes in board games, when you get small folding boards, they aren't heavy enough to lay flat. But these small folding boards, they lay perfectly flat and I love it. So here's the hero side where you will keep track of your stats and all of your gear and your hero. So as you can see, it just looks so much nicer. And then on this side here, we do have our dungeon board. So that's how it looks now. So here's where we'll keep our map. When we have our enemies, we'll put those up there. And then we can hold some, some uh, cards along the border there. Now I will usually use a card tray just because I think it's a little more organized just to keep cards up in a tray. And um, I don't 
when I'm reaching over, I don't knock things down. Now you do get two additional player boards because they have included the three player um, expansion as part of the game now. And, and there's also a new mode and the new mode uses the back of these for a mega dungeon. So instead of going through five small levels of a dungeon, you go through one big dungeon that has an entrance and then a boss and the numbers on the gems will tell you what level of card to draw for that corresponding room. And there are one, two, three, four different large dungeons for you to go through. So this was a huge surprise for me. I had no idea that they were going to include this completely new mode. And I think this is really cool. I was I was just super surprised to see that and very, very happy to see that as well. I think that's pretty neat. Now, I have not played that new version yet. And that new version, the Mega Dungeon mode, does require a lot more table space because you need to keep a lot more of the room cards set up while you are playing. And so it kind of turns a small table game into a larger table game. Nothing crazy. We're not talking, you know, Dungeon Crusade <laughs> <laughs> levels of, of table, but uh, you will need a bigger space because one of the things that I love about this game is that this is the space it takes up. I can play an entire game on a TV tray while I'm sitting in front of the TV. And man, that is so cool. OK, let's um, let's start next or let's move into next. Let's move into the uh, the heroes. OK, so on the left side, we'll keep uh, the original first edition stuff. And here on the right side, we'll keep uh, the new second edition stuff. So we have all of our heroes. So with that little expansion in the first edition, there were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different heroes. And now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten heroes. So we have three, we have three new heroes. And let's take a look at our rogue here. And you can kind of see the differences in the art. And yeah, it just looks really good. I love that the hero is now in the dungeon. I think that looks cool. The icons are the same, and there was no issue with the icons. I thought they, look, they looked fine. But here we have that. Now, we don't have any of the wording because all of the wording is, yeah, you just need to grab the associated skill cards with each of the heroes. I guess we could get those out now since we're kind of looking at those as well. Let me grab, uh, where are my, my hero cards? Okay. So first edition, we have all of our hero skills. So each of the heroes, has a deck of cards that they will start the game with. And that deck of cards will include things like their starting gear, uh, usually some weapons and their starting skills. So let's take a look here at the rogue. Let's find the rogue starting abilities. And so when you play a character, you don't really need to have anything printed on their character sheet as far as what they start with, because you'll just grab all of their starting cards. And then, so let's grab the first edition rogue. I'm not sure. I haven't looked at all of these yet, so I don't know if there are if there are differences in any of the starting gear. I don't think there are, but let's take a look here. I'm not sure if there was any rebalancing done. I haven't looked at that closely yet. I have played twice already the second edition and, and it felt about the same to me, except for some of the new stuff. So we have two, three, two, two, three, two, four, 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 and one. And then of course, each of the characters does come with a male and female side, and there are no differences. It just uh, just depends on, on what kind of character you want to play. But yeah, it just looks so much better. So here we have our second edition. Uh, let's look at the skills here. So the rogue has three skills. We have backstab, evade and disarm traps, and sneak attack. And let's see what skills we had here. So, yep, evade and disarm traps, sneak attack and backstab. So mostly the same where things didn't need to be improved. They weren't. As you can see, the colors are a little brighter, a little more defined. The original version here, a little more muted. And evade and disarm traps and then sneak attack. So just a little crisper. Again, it's, it's almost like a HD remake or something like that an HD remaster, hunk of cheese, lock pick and rope there for the gear and also a dagger for your starting weapon. And then hunk of cheese, rope, lock pick and a dagger. 
Okay, so everything is pretty much the same there. It just looks a lot nicer. So we have Rogue. Uh, let's see the Dwarf Miner. Okay, so here's the Miner there. Much nicer face there. Yeah, man. It just, it looks so good. He did such a good job. And let's see, Sorcerer. Sorcerer, yep, Sorcerer was included. All right, our Sorcerer. And then our Aristocrat. So there's our Aristocrat there. Our Elf Ranger. So now it's just Ranger. So we have Ranger there, male and female. Really nice. Our Crusader. Crusader Paladin. That's the guy from the cover there that we took a look at earlier. A lot more detail on the beard. More detail in the outfit there. Our Monk. And then our three new characters here. We have a Barbarian. We have a Bard and a Machinist. So those are all the characters. Really cool to have uh, three new characters. I like that. It's always nice to have variety, especially in these kinds of games that kind of live and die by their variety. So there, there is a lot of variety in this second edition. And from what I've gathered, from what I've been told, there will be uh, there will be new expansions. So they are going to continue to upgrade this game and add things to it. I am really hoping for some small expansions. I think this would be a perfect game for some small box expansions that we can just easily add a booster pack, not, not random, but you know, a booster pack uh, size expansion for uh, different things, for different rooms or different characters and that kind of stuff. Uh, let's take a look at the dungeon cards now. So in a game of Rogue Dungeon, you will be working through five levels of a dungeon if you're not playing one of the new mega dungeon modes. And these uh, level, th these dungeons are double sided, these dungeon cards. So you'll be uh, randomly mixing these up and shuffling them and flipping them and then drawing five. And that will be levels one, two, three, four and five as you go down. And you have to defeat the boss at the end of level five. And you will start on your stairs and then you will move down corridors to each gym. And the different gems do different things. Uh, the red gems are usually your encounter cards. The yellow gems are, are traps and usually environmental things that you have to overcome. The yellow cards are persistent, so they stay out on the board. All of the other cards are basically the rooms. You encounter them once and then they are discarded. And so you can continue to pass through different gems on your way to the exit. But every time you pass through a persistent room, you have to face off against that room. And it's a really neat system that makes the dungeons feel like they are tangible things, that they have some persistence. And I do really like that. But in the second edition, you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So 24 different dungeons. And in the first edition, there were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So 14. So you get 10 more. So uh, that's that's pretty great. That's awesome. And some of them have different looks and different feels, and they do really feel different. Uh, there's one that I thought was really cool. It's this round dungeon. Yeah, this just wow, super cool. And as you explore them, you will you will learn like the best ways to navigate them and how to you really do need to kind of press your luck as you are playing because you do want to try to get to the good stuff. And usually the white, blue, and green, those will be good cards that you want to draw that will help you get new gear, or maybe they will have NPCs and things that you have to do to test your abilities in order to get bonuses. But you often have to pass through red rooms, which are monsters and encounters or other yellow rooms to get there. So. Just, just such a, a fascinating system. I, I love, I love that design. And then let's see. Let's take a look at our monsters here. So we have five levels of monster. Here's our monster deck, one through five, and the bosses. And then here we have five. As you can see, first edition on the left, new edition on the right. 
it just looks much classier. I love the way this looks. They did such a good job of updating everything. And in the first edition, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten level one monsters. In the second edition, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten and ten. So we have the Shadow White. God, that looks great. The Scorpion, the Wolf, the Skeleton, the Cave Bear, the Goblin. Look at that Goblin. Ah, just the coloring and everything. The lighting is so good. That That's one thing that uh, really makes these, these, these new images pop is that lighting. The zombie. I've always loved the zombie. The giant wasps, the knoll, and the green slime is just totally killer. Look at that green slime. All right, let's find the original green slime here. And you can just see the difference in the art. So good, so good. I love it. And what about the Shadow White? I know the Shadow White has much better uh, kind of posing and and just a, a more menacing look in the second edition. Super, super cool. Let's take a detailed comparison look at one more here, the Skeleton, because I love Skeletons. I love Undead Warriors. Yeah, just knocked it out of the park there. Really, really good. So that's all of your first edition monsters or your first uh, first level monsters. And then let's see, first edition here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine uh, level two monsters. In second edition, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. So three new, uh, three new monsters in your second edition. We have rats, skeleton warrior. Ah, oh, look at that guy, killer. Um, a lizard man. Mech Spider. I, I felt kind of bad about talking about how I wasn't really into the art of the first edition, how it just just wasn't wowing me. And I I, uh, I don't know, John. Uh, yeah, you <laughs> you completely nailed it out of the park with this new edition. It looks so good, man. Uh, Mech Spider and Orc. Evil Cats. Oh, man. Uh, the Hobgoblin. That dude looks sick. Uh, Lesser Demon. A Dire Wolf. Assassin Vine, a troglodyte. Look at that troglodyte. And a kobold. Now that is a great looking kobold. So I don't know, guys. I, I know I'm kind of kind of fanning out on this, but yeah, I, this is one of my favorite games. And, and to see this done in such a lovely second edition just makes me really happy. Uh, rats, Assassin Vine, the Lizard Man, the Dire Wolf, the Hobgoblin, the Skeletal Warrior. The Cobalt. I mean, just look at the update on that. I think he was saying somewhere that each of these images took him about four hours or something to do. Troglodyte and the Orc. Okay, so let's see. Level three monsters in the first edition. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And how many do we get in second edition? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So one additional. We have a gargoyle, a ghoul, a giant cobra, a giant spider, a harpy, a hellhound, an imp, the rust monster, the shambling mound. Oh man, that looks killer. Love it. A troll. And a mech soldier. I think the mech soldier is probably new. Yeah, it is because that is in the tomb. So some of the monsters will only appear in the tomb or in the original dungeon. And then some of the monsters appear in all of the dungeons. And so that's kind of how you separate out your cards. We can talk a little bit more about that when we get to the different rooms. So here we have rust monster, a ghoul. I mean, just look at that, the difference in that ghoul. And let's see, ghoul, giant spider, giant cobra, imp, shambling mound, troll, hellhound, harpy, and gargoyle. So that's all of our first uh, edition cards there for level four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So probably some additional new ones for uh, for the the tomb. We have our air elemental, our fire spider, giant, a griffin, a mech goliath. Yeah, so the mech goliath only appears in the tomb. We have our medusa, our minotaur, our ogre. Our ogre appears in the original dungeon. Uh, stone golem, the succubus is only in the tomb. 
and a water elemental, a werewolf, and a wraith. Oh, look at that wraith. Man, that is killer. And then let's see here. We have our werewolf, Medusa, giant, water elemental, griffin, minotaur, ogre, air elemental, the wraith. There's a comparison and our stone golem. Okay, so level five in first edition. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And in second edition, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So same amount here. So let's look at our second edition. We have the Basilisk, the Cyclops, the Devil, Earth Elemental, Fire Elemental, the Hydra. I love that Hydra. The uh, chromatic aberration effect on there just looks really cool. The Mummy, the Ogre Mage, the Soul Gazer, and the Vampire. And here we have our Hydra, our Basilisk, the Mummy, Fire Elemental, Vampire, Soul Gazer, Cyclops, Devil, Earth Elemental, and Ogre Mage. And then finally, we have our bosses. So one, two, three, four, five in the original. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So three new potential bosses in the second edition. Uh, let's look at our second edition. We have the Balrog. We have a uh, Severus, the Death Knight, the Lich King, the Mountain Giant, the Red Dragon, the Soul Tyrant, and the Storm Giant. And in the original, we have Cerberus, we have the Red Dragon, Balrog, the Lich King, and the Storm Giant. Okay, now let's take a look at our room cards. And the room cards correspond to whichever color gem you move through. You draw a corresponding room uh, card that corresponds to that color gem. And in the original game, there was only one set of cards. In this new game, in the new edition, we have two sets of cards. We have an entire deck of room cards for the original, for the, I think it's the sewers, and that will have that symbol. And then we also have a brand new deck of cards for the tomb. So this is another really cool way that the game can be expanded by just including a whole new deck of cards for a new dungeon. And so when you create your, your overall decks of cards for each dungeon, whichever dungeon you are going into, you will choose all of the cards with that symbol plus any cards that don't have a symbol at all. And there are some generic red cards, encounter cards that get mixed in with every single dungeon. And so those will be your basic encounters. So we have encounter where you will encounter one or two monsters. Of course, we have our pit of despair, which you have to fight three monsters. That's a very deadly card there. Uh, we have guard barracks and then the tomb of the Lich King. And let's take a look at our red cards from our original game here. So we have all of our red cards there. Again, the backs just look so much, just so much nicer. And the card quality is really good. Whoever did the printing, whoever did the actual production, the physical production of the components in the second edition also knocked it out of the park. Just really well made. So we have our encounters. There's our Tomb of the Lich King, our original card. Uh, what else do we have? There's our Pit of Despair and our various encounters, our Guard Barracks. So very similar. So that is the generic red rooms there. And then let's take a look at our original cards here for our sewer. So we have three special red encounters. Golem with the ruby eyes, that encounter, and then the monster bash. And then let's take a look at our blue, uh, blue cards there. Let's see here. Where are those? Are those blue or green? The colors don't exactly match from one edition to the next. So blue, purple, yellow, and white there. So I think these are the blues here. So we have a witch. So that is an NPC. So a witch, a treasure room, the alchemist lab. That looks so good. The lighting is so great a locked door, a magic mouth, a mystic fountain, and a secret door. So let's see here. Let's find that corresponding uh, corresponding deck in the original. Yellows, greens, treasure room. Here we go. So in, in the original, there were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In the new version, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So same amount there. So there's our original treasure room, alchemist lab, secret door, locked door, mystical fountain, the witch, 
And as you can see, a comparison there. Very cool. And our magic mouth. Okay, so that's all of our green. What color? What color do they call that? Maybe I'm a little colorblind there. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what color that is. Green. I guess I guess those are green. Those are like the green rooms there. And let's take a look at our blue rooms. So we have our purple, our white, and our blue rooms. So originally we had one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five. Now, so as you are exploring the five levels of the dungeon, you will always come across the same number of rooms for each gym. Each level of the dungeon will have one blue room, one white room, one green room, one purple room, three yellows, and three reds. And like Iron Helm, like Tin Helm, Knowing what's coming up next is a great benefit to doing well in the game. And so every time you play through a game, if you get through all five levels, you will face all five of these blue rooms. And so knowing which ones you've done and remembering what's coming next is a good uh, strategy for playing well. So we have the dark room, the gold deposits, the locked safe, Song of Sirens, and the Wounded Dwarf. And we have those same cards here, Dark Room, Gold Deposits, Wounded Dwarf, Locked Safe, and Song of the Sirens. And our purple rooms, we have one, two, three, four, five in the original. One, two, three, four, five there. All right, our five in the first, our second edition. We have our Weapons Master, Sword in a Stone, Orb of Destruction, the Pit of Spikes, and a Prison Cell. And the corresponding first edition, Orb of, Orb of Destruction, Pit of Spikes, Weapon Master, Sword in a Stone, and Prison Cell. Now let's just take a look at the comparison here between these uh, Pit of Spikes. And you can just see the kind of HD upgrade. And the text looks really nice as well. And uh, thank you for not making the text super, super tiny. It is actually uh, readable, so that is nice. Okay, so those were our purple cards, our purple cards. Now we have our white rooms. And let's find our corresponding white rooms in the second edition here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there were five and then they added two in the expansion. And you can actually tell the backs of the two expansion cards are a little different color. So in our second edition here, we have Combat Training, Deal with the Devil, Gnome Trader, Gold Merchant, Sacred Temple, Skeleton Trader, and the Wise Man. Ah, those look so cool. Gnome Trader, Wise Man, Sacred Temple. So there you can tell the difference there. Uh, Guild Merchant, Skeleton Trader, Combat Training, and Deal with the Devil. So one of the reasons why I love this game so much is uh, it's it's a roguelike. It's one and done. You're just trying to play through a, a five level dungeon. Um, it doesn't take up a lot of space on the table. It's in a small box and there are a huge number of different types of encounters. We have combat encounters. We have traps. We have NPCs. We have events. It just has absolutely everything I look for in a dungeon crawl in a small box on a small table and it doesn't take a ton of time to play. It's just a win, win, win all around. And finally, we have our, pers our persistent cards and those are the yellow cards. And so in the original, we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, because you will uh, have three on each floor with five floors and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So we have our Bat Swarm, our Cave-In, Crushing Wall, Gelatinous Cube, Gremlins, Lake of Fire, a Maze, the Narrow Ledge. These are all things that you have to do. Usually you will have to do some kind of stat test in order to pass. And because these are persistent, they stay out on the board. And so every time you pass over this colored gem, you have to do this again. Spider Web. Swinging Blades, Trap Door, Trapped Chest, a Treasure Mimic, and a Troll Bridge. And then our originals, we have Gremlins, Narrow Ledge, Maze, Spider Web, Poisonous Gas, Mimic. We have our Gelatinous Cube, Swinging Blades, Bat Swarm, Trap Door, Cave In, Troll Bridge, Trapped Chest, Crushing Wall, and Lake of Fire. And then let's compare our Mimics there. Uh, that Mimic on the right looks much more deadly. 
Yeah, so super cool. So that, those were the cards. Those were all the room cards from our original uh, sewers or whatever the original dungeon is called. I can't quite remember. And then we have this stack here, and these are all new. So these are all of the rooms that correspond to... We have the yellow, white, purple, blue, green, and red cards for the for the tomb. So we have new uh, red cards here. We have our our uh, demons layer, our seer's wrath, our demon sanctuary, the catacombs, and then we get into our green here. Uh, let's do it like this. And this is better. I don't have to keep uh, flipping them over. So yeah, so these are the red cards that we will add to our generic red cards for the uh, for the tomb. Again, catacombs, demons layer, seers, wraith, or wrath, and demon sanctuary. And then here we have all of our yellow cards. So all of our persistent rooms: trapped demon, a acid pool, a bull mech, an armored guardians, concealed pit, a throne circle, a stone door, a mosaic floor. This is that little puzzle with those little tokens I showed at the beginning of the game. A hallowed ground, a mummy crypt, skeleton archers, a wind tunnel, mystic portal, undead aura, and a haunted hall. And then here's our white cards. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have a tickle gnome. We have a unholy altar, a trapped spirit, a spirit trader, an arcane apparatus, and the altar of Timriel. And then our purple cards, one, two, three, four, five. So we have our necromancer's tomb, our royal crypt, secret alcove, ancient runes, and the astral summoning. Our blue, one, two, three, four, five. Animated dead, wailing banshee, shadow demons, obsidian statues, and a false wall. And then finally, our green cards, which there are one, two, three, four, five. We have uh, Timriel's Trial, our Shimmering Pool, the Necropolis, the Enchanted Obelisk, and the Antichamber. So that's a whole new deck of cards that you get to explore in this new edition. We also have all of our unique gear here, and we do have a new deck of cards that also corresponds to the tombs. And this is Cursed Gear. We'll take a little look at that in just a minute here. So we have our unique gear. These are things that you will be told to draw at certain points uh, because of cards that you faced while you are exploring the dungeon. And so those have a hand symbol on there. And three of those will be your camping gear. And so you will always start with some camping gear so you can rest after you've had an encounter. And then there are a whole bunch of special uh, items and necromancers, wand, bag of gold, charmed cats. So you can charm creatures and they will join you as allies. Cave bear, cobra, dire wolf, monster, rats, spider, wolf. And then we have some other special um, weapons there, or maybe a dwarf ally, a friendly spirit, a spell sword, a skeleton, a striking staff, a sword, the tar, and the wise man. And here are all of those cards there. Some of their corresponding. There are, I think there's at least one or two new ones. And then this is a whole new deck of cursed items. And so these cursed items, you can still use them as an item. They're an item for everything that you need an item to be for. Plus, they will give you something bad that happens. And when you take it, you have to equip it. But then there are opportunities in the tomb to discard these and to get rid of them. So these are all of your cursed gear. And so cursed gear will give you some little bonus and also a detriment. And getting these cursed gear cards can be uh, can be very, very deadly. Put this uh, camping gear back. And then I think our final deck of cards here is the loot deck. And so here is the original or the uh, second edition loot deck. And here is the original. Now I haven't gone through the entire, oops, forgot one of those, uh, one of those skill cards there. I haven't gone through the entire loot deck yet. I think it's about the same. Just looking at it, it's about the same size, but you will have all kinds of different loot. And so you have different kinds of potions, different kinds of amulets and uh, weapons and armor and spells. 
uh, different types of healing potions and combat spells and defense spells, offense spells, different crystals, a flintlock pistol, diamonds that you can get to trade because some of these items will just be worth treasure. But as you encounter different NPCs on your adventure, you will be able to trade that treasure for opportunities to uh, engage with that NPC. And so it's really cool. I like that. So I like the system quite a bit. And then you will also get some tokens and basically the same tokens, but you get enough for three players. And so you have all of these uh, tokens. You will use the tokens to cover up rooms on the cards that you have already been uh, through. Or if you're playing uh, one of the large dungeons, you, you can place those out on the board. You can also use this to randomize the tokens by uh, putting them face down and covering the tokens that are are covering the gems that are already on a dungeon so that way you never kind of know where each one is that makes the game quite a bit harder and uh you will get your your standard dice here so yeah that is um kind of everything that you get in this new edition of rogue dungeon and i know they they still have some copies available on their website and because they are going to be making expansions, I'm hoping they are able to keep the game in print. I really do think this game should be a huge hit. And I'm very happy to see that people are enjoying it. The people who bought the second edition seem to be really liking it. Uh, this could be just one of those games. It's, it's small enough that it could practically be an impulse buy. I would love to see this game in game stores. I don't know if people would buy it. I don't know. It's still pretty niche, I think. And I think it speaks really directly to the Dungeon Dive audience and the kinds of games that a lot of us like. We like smaller games, typically. Um, or maybe we like smaller games a little more often than other comparable communities. I know that a lot of us on the Dungeon Dive are not big fans of long campaign games. We like this kind of Zero to Hero style, roguelike style. Lots of random encounters of various kinds, so combat and non-combat, and uh, various ways to build out your characters. So yeah, this game just has has everything that I look for in a game. And a box that is just slightly bigger than maybe two VHS cassettes. If that is not a dated reference, then I don't know what is. But man, I am so happy about Rogue Dungeon 2nd Edition. I think this is fantastic. And I hope you guys enjoyed this comparison video and we will talk to you later. Bye bye.